So talking about Rastafari and music now, wow, what a wonderful thing. You know, if we consider that so many people got the message of Rastafari through the music, yeah, let's think about Bob Marley, let's think about all the pioneers, all those great voices that raised up from the ghettos. And uh, they managed to take this message so far to the four corners of the world. That's why we're talking about Reagan Rastafari now in South America, in uh, Europe, Italy. We're talking about Rastafari in Japan, China and all over the world. Nowadays there is not one place in which there is not the presence of Rastafari. Yeah, because this is the prophecy to the four corners of the earth. So why, why Rasta is related to music, to reggae? Why the reggae music? We have to go back then. We have to make a journey backward in time. When, 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 when in 90, in, um, sorry, in four, uh, 1494, Christopher Columbus arrived in Jamaica. Some people say discovered, we never say discovered because Jamaica was there already. Arawak were living there. Yeah? So he arrived in a place called Discovery Bay in Jamaica. After that, Jamaica was under the Spanish rule. And then during the 17th century, he passed on to the, the English, the British Empire. Yeah? So Jamaica become, became uh, part of the British Empire, English colony. What happened now? That millions of Africans started to be deported from Africa to Jamaica, to the Caribbean. Actually, Jamaica had a very peculiar part in the slave trade history because Jamaica was, was let's say, the gate to the so-called New World, meaning Jamaica was the place in which the, the slave ships would carry the slaves and then from Jamaica and from the Caribbean then they were, they were, um, they were brought to other places like Brazil, like yeah, Central America and other places like that. So Jamaica was, was actually very, very important, sadly important in the history of the slave trade. Places like Port Royal in Jamaica, they were called the wickedest city of the world. Because Jamaica was a place of buccaneers, pirates, yes? So it was a very, very afflicted place, very much so. But looking into, into, into the history, we see that those slaves that arrived on the shores of Jamaica, they couldn't carry anything with them. The only thing they could take with them was their heartbeat, their soul, yeah? And the way to express the heartbeat, the soul, was the music. So music was the only thing they really brought with them, a way of oral tradition, oral culture. And the only way to keep this culture alive, this legacy with Mother Africa, was through music. That's why they used to gather, when they were not working as slaves, they used to gather and, and sing and beat the drum. So the drum, the drum became the only way to be near to Africa, near to home. So the drum became the real instrument of freedom. Those slaves brought with them a kind of music called burro music, a very fast beat, yeah, something like So those, those, those slaves used to gather and uh, and 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 play and dance together, yeah. So we're talking about Jamaican folklore. We're talking about uh, revivalism. Yeah, we're talking about um, dancing, singing, drumming together for nights, for hours during the night. What happened is that 
when Rasta rise. Rasta, Rasta, during the 40s, started to say, we cannot take part in that revivalism. We use the drum as well because the drum is an is a instrument of freedom, but we are not taking part into the revivalism. We're not dealing with the doppies, yeah, with invoking the ancestors, with the spirits, and with all of this. So we have to, we have to take ourselves out of that tradition. And we want to start something new. So the Buru rhythm was slowed down. And from that fast beat, it became the Naya Bingi heartbeat, which goes tum tum, tum tum, ch, tum tum, tum tum, ch, tum tum. So the Naya Bingi heartbeat became the foundational music, the sacred music of the Rastafari. So the rituals of Rastafari, the chanting of Rastafari was accompanied but by the, by the, by the Naya, Naya Bingi heartbeat, by the Naya Bingi rhythm, the Naya Bingi music. Yes, so from the 40s going on, this Naya Bingi music was played, uh, was played in the Rasta yard. And what, what are the Rasta yard, the Rasta camp? The Rasta camp were, were basically uh, uh, um, yeah, yard confined by um, by zinc fence, yeah, in front of the house of prominent Rastafari Bregin, which used to which 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 used to host other Bregin in their yard, and to, all together used to reason, and used to sing, and chant, and read the Bible. And, uh, and talking about Africa, about Ayla Selassie. Ganja was there, Aital Food was there, a lot of reasoning, a lot of, a lot of counseling was there. So the Rasta Yard, the Rasta Camp, they were the, the open air Rasta University. And there is where generations of Rastafari learned about the liberty, learned about Ayla Selassie, learned about how to eat, how to speak, how to play the drums, learn about the prophecies of the Bible. So the Rasta camp, they were the real, real university of Rastafaris. That's why we have many, many ancients in Rastafari which they were not um, uh, educated um, according to Western standards. Some of them they could not even read or write, but they knew a lot of things. They knew about the Bible, they knew about politics, they knew about history, and they could talk about stuff until the end of time. They were very, very, very a knowledge person, even though they could not read and write, because they learned in the Rasta camp. So in the Rasta camp, this new redeem developed, yeah? East Kingston, you had uh, in 9th Street, Trenchstone, 9th Street, Congo Watu, most fundamental Rastafari ancients and patriarch, yeah. On on in Congo Watu was also the founder, yeah, of the uh, Youth Black Faith, a group of very um, zealous radical Rastafari, yes. And uh, and uh, on the other side of Kingston, in West Kingston, there was Count Tossi and the mystical revelation of Rastafari, uh, that they were kind of, kind of blending the Naya Bingi rhythm with the jazz, yeah, with the music coming from the United States as well, black music, yeah, giving birth to this new genre of music. So the Naya Bingi music was, was the backbone of Rastafari uh, cultural revolution, yes? So in the yard, the Rastaman was there, burning the chalice, playing the Naya Bingi music, chanting. These chants, they were hymns, they were prayers taken from the Bible. And the Naya Bingi chant is not only a song, but is also a weapon. Not a, 
not a weapon against flesh, not like a gun, not like a rifle, but a spiritual weapon against spiritual wickedness in highest and low places. So when you chant Nayabingi, you are not only praying, but you are also fighting against the wickedness that is present in this world. That's why, that's why Nayabingi is a prayer, but it's also, uh, it's, also, it's also a spiritual war in which you don't have to fight nor kill, but you have to expand your heart into love and you, and you have to make sure that this love will, 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 will encompass everything else. Yes, and so you purify your heart, your soul through the Naya Bingi music, the rhythm of the Naya Bingi. Yes, and the chant will lift you up in your, in your, in your, in your heavenly frequency. So in those yards, in those yards, youth like Bob Marley, Joe Higgs, Neville Livingstone, Peter Tosh, and all of the pioneers, they used to sit with the Rasta man and listen to this Rasta chant and get inspired. And they transition from, from being rude boy, yeah, to being Rasta man. So that's how, that's how, when they started to play music, the, the, the Rastafari message was in the music. And, the, and eventually the Rastafari rhythm came into the music. And that's why ska became rocksteady and rocksteady became reggae. And that's why reggae became Rasta music. A vehicle to take this message to the four corners of the earth. Yes, and in 1961, was the first time in which Rastafari uh, Bredgin entered the recording studio in Jamaica and the song was Ho Carolina by the mystic revelation of Rastafari. That was the first time in which you could hear the Naya Bingi drum in the, in the history of Jamaican music. And, uh, and now, if we look now, Naya Bingi music it has become the foundation of all, all Western black music. Yes, foundation of all. It's from Naya Bingi music that you have reggae, that you have hip-hop, that you 